All right, y'all. I don't even know where to begin with week five. I mean, this NFL season has been crazy. And it started Thursday night in which Russell Wilson got, you know, injured. You know, finger. One of his fingers. He's now out for a month. And the Rams, they were able to take care of the Seahawks in spite of a bad penalty. We're talking a bad penalty that wasn't called. There was a punt by the punter Dixon, you know, and he double punted it. It was a double punt. You can't do that in the NFL. I didn't even know this was a rule. But you can't do that. It was a crazy play, but you can't do that. And so the Seahawks had to trot out Geno Smith. And unfortunately, Tyler Lockett decided to trip, causing an interception late, causing the Rams to kick a field goal. You know, who knows? Who knows, man? Seahawks are now two and three. This is bizarre. Bizarre stuff right there. Falcons almost let the Jets come back in London. I mean, I don't, I don't know what y'all expect at this point. I mean, this is the Falcons we're talking about here. The Lions are poverty. Like, this is pretty sad for the, for the Lions. Like, they lose on a field goal late. You know, they thought they were going to win this game. They were up 17-16 with not even, you know, not much time left. And then the Vikings go down and actually get clutch with kicking. But we'll talk about kicking here in a moment here. You know, the Patriots, they were down to the Texans for a while. And then, boom just as quick as you could say it. Patriots were able to come back and beat the Texans. Unreal stuff right there. Really a shame. You know, it's also a shame for those Panthers. Like, what happened? They were 3-0 and at one point. I mean, the competition that they faced, you know, has been, you know, it's been, again, it's been a weird season so far, so we can't really say that everybody's bad or anything like that yet. But the Panthers have lost two straight. And the Eagles... Now they got their second win of the season. Crazy stuff, man. Saints were able to take care of the Washington football team, despite the fact that Jameis Winston had two throwers early of this game. I don't know which Jameis Winston we're gonna get, everybody. We're gonna get we're we're gonna get another thirty for thirty. I promise you, probably. Can we get another thirty for thirty on Jameis Winston this year? That, that'd be nice. Uh, Bucks easily take care of the Dolphins. Titans take care of the Jags with Derrick Henry. You know, getting back into form. Steelers were able to beat the Broncos. Teddy Bridgewater came back. The Steelers, however, probably have lost Juju Smith-Schuster for the rest of the season. Apparently, it seems. I read that up today, um, this afternoon. Um, Bears. Oh wait, hold on. Before we before we get to that, you know, we got to talk the big one. John Gruden. Yeah, the Bears did beat the Ravens on Sunday, twenty to nine, in a game where Justin Fields was playing efficient. That wasn't the big thing about this game. The aura surrounding this game was John Gruden, and the emails stemming back from way back when, about a decade or so ago, almost almost a decade or so ago, where he was communicating with one of the Washington football teams. You know, you know. Um, one of their higher up guys and just saying some racist, misogynist, sexist, you know, anti-gay type stuff. Like this is not the type of stuff you're supposed to be saying in emails. You're not supposed to be sending pictures of half-naked women, you know, half-naked cheerleaders. And that's even weirder. Like, why are y'all sharing emails about half-naked cheerleaders? It doesn't make any sense. And John Gruden finally said, you know what, I'm just going to resign. I am no longer head coach of the Raiders. And the Raiders fans were not, were, they, they're not happy. They weren't happy. In fact, a lot of people were predicting that Gruden would be fired at the end of the year. But we didn't think it'd go down this bad. You know, once the NYT article came out earlier this afternoon, it was like that, like clockwork. And they had reviewed, you know, the NFL reviewed over, like, what, 6,000 emails and stuff like that. And things just, you know, just escalated quickly. Quickly. That's how fast it gets. You can't say those types of things, you know. What, whatever those emails truly entailed... You know, again, it was a bunch of, you know, slurs and 
things like that. You know, again, whatever the rest of those emails entailed, because I, I haven't seen the actual emails that I have seen, you know, s snippets from it, but the actual emails themselves, you know, who knows what was in those emails, because there could be more that could be damning to John Gruden. Now John Gruden is out of a job. So congratulations to you. Congrats to the Raiders. You guys lost again this week. Um, but yeah, let's go back. Go, go back a little bit before we get to the other one. We get to the other 3 o'clock games on Sunday. Let's go back a little bit to the Packers Bengals. My God. Mason Crosby mixed four kicks. Cincinnati's kicker missed a couple as well. There were five straight missed kicks in a duel between Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, and Joe Burrow, and Jamar Chase. It was a duel out there. I mean, these two teams were were playing lights out in this game. It was neck and neck. But it had to be the kickers that messed us up. Did you know there were 20-something, 20 20 plus missed kicks? I don't know how many there were missed, you know, in this game that we'll be talking about in a little while here, but there were 20-something missed kicks in this game. You know, not, I mean, not just in this game. There were, I believe, like five or six in this game. At least five. We know the five straight missed kicks for the Packers in Cincinnati. But there were 20-plus missed kicks in the NFL this week. Boy, you say hashtag NFL kickers, I mean it. Go ahead and go ahead and look. You'll see it's me putting hashtag NFL kickers pretty much every week on Twitter, man. Crazy stuff this week with these kickers, man. Browns and Chargers. My God, what a game. I tuned in into the second half of this game, you know, after we'll I'll talk about this other one in a minute, but Browns Chargers in the second half. It was a duel out west. Herbert versus Mayfield. And a lot of people are now going to be, you know, you know, putting a lot of backlash on Baker Mayfield due to the fact that they're that they aren't getting the offense. You know, you know, it seems like you know people are mad at Baker Mayfield for not getting the offense efficiently. You know, getting that offense efficient enough to guys like Odell Beckham Jr. It feels like you know that that's the main criticism I've been hearing in the last couple of days, last couple of hours, is that oh well Baker needs to throw the ball more to Odell. You know. He, they only had what two catches in this game. But I mean, the Chargers were able to somehow get out of this with the victory. I mean, they missed the PAT late, and they were trying to just kick a field goal, and they got a touchdown. You know, and I mean, it almost came. It don't. I mean, that hail mary at the end by Baker almost. He almost had it. He almost had it. Well, that's, that was what I tuned into in the second half. In the first half, however, the first half of these late games, I tuned into the Cardinals 49ers. And I got to tell you, Cardinals are 5 0. Oh. Cardinals are efficient. That defense is legit. Trey Lance, unfortunately, he, he made some plays, but he threw a, he, like he threw an interception like very early into the game. And that's when I knew, yeah, this isn't working out. This is not going to work out very well for including a goal line stop also in this game by the Cardinals. What a great goal line stop that was. I mean, the Cardinals were up 10 to nothing at one point, and that just pretty much that pretty much sealed the deal for me. I turned this off as soon as I saw that Cardinal. I mean, not the Cardinals, the Chargers Brown score. I knew I was switching at halftime. Well, how about them Cowboys? How about it? Dax Revenge from last year. 364 days removed from a horrific injury that could have cost him his career and he comes in and beats the Giants he comes back home beats the Giants you know you know I mean this is the same Giants team that we played last year and that injury happened that horrific injury and boom you know there it was Giants get demolished by the Cowboys it it got a it got hectic Kadarius Tony got ejected from this game for throwing a bunch and that's not the only thing bad that happened to the Giants you know, you know we've been talking about the Giants how dysfunctional as an organization they've been over the past few weeks it it just it just did not work out well Giants. We're talking Daniel Jones got injured at one point. We're talking Saquon Barkley got injured again in this game. And I mean, I'm just sitting here like, what is going on out here, man? 
Like the Giants are just getting injuries left and right. Like this team is hobbled. They had, they had more injuries throughout the game as well. I mean, this was just a crazy, crazy time. And the Cowboys, they continue to move on up and lead the division in the NFC East. So how about Sunday nights and Monday nights to wrap this up here? Well, you got a lightning delay for an hour in this Bills Chiefs game, but the lightning delay wasn't able to stop Josh Allen from doing what he does best, which is run and throw the ball efficiently, excellently, and he just torched this Chiefs defense. We're talking we're talking Tyron Matthew is like talking down to Dirty Dan Sorensen throughout this entire second half because of how bad it was. Like that was a bad pass given up by Sorensen. And I don't know what's wrong with Patrick Mahomes, man. I mean, he can he he obviously can throw basketball passes now. You know, he was throwing overhand, underhand passes a couple weeks ago. Now he's throwing basketball passes for touchdowns. But he's still committing a lot of turnovers. I don't know what's going on now. I don't know what's going on with the Chiefs. Chiefs ain't looking as efficient. Clyde Edwards Hilaire got injured too. Chiefs ain't looking as efficient. Like Frank Clark made a critical penalty in this game as well too. I mean, Chiefs just, they're not good this year. They're not good this year so far. Not at all. Colts, you know, we this game just finished up about 15 minutes or so ago in overtime with the Ravens, of course, delivering us another overtime thriller in which the Colts missed a couple kicks and allowed 20 plus unanswered to the Ravens. You can't have that, man. You can't have that. Like we're going into week six now, and week six has a week six is even weirder. Like this is gonna be even weirder, a weirder week than last week. I'm telling you right now, this is gonna be crazy. This week is going to be. Um, so yeah, that's all I got. I mean, my mind is blown from week five. Like, I didn't even watch this Monday night game. I watched, I've watched Barry the last couple of highlights at the end here. But, uh, yeah. What a week of NFL football. I cannot wait to talk about week six in a couple of days. So I'll see you all in a couple of days for week six. Um, this is going to be one hell of a week, let me tell you that. My goodness, man. This is crazy, crazy stuff. All right, everybody. Y'all have a good night. Take care.